You are such an asshole! Hey everybody, the old captain here. We're obviously on the road, and this is, I owe this guy, I've been late in delivering this, so I want to issue my apologies to the client. I'm about a day too late. Uh, but I have, I have no excuse. I'm busy, but I have no excuse. Uh, hey, Claire, I've watched a lot of your videos on YouTube, and you sound like someone who has a real-world experience and knows the shit and is not afraid to be truthful. Therefore, I'd like to make a video request. I'd like to hear your advice on the choices that I will have to make the next few years of my life. Here's my background. I'm 27 year old from New Zealand. <clears throat> I have a bachelor's degree in biomechanical or biomedical engineering, which turned out to be a terrible choice. Yep, anything with bio is a bad degree. I knew this one guy. Shut up. Not you. Uh, I took a lot of breath classes in math program, molecular biology, physiology, circuit design, etc., but never specialized in any particular area. Ironically, none of my professors had degrees in biomedical engineering. Most had backgrounds in traditional engineering, such as electrical and mechanical engineering. Right. <clears throat> Those are the ones that do all the real work. I just like protozoans and amoebas, and I like the fruit fly experiment. Uh, I fell for this because I was told in 2008 by my mom, who probably didn't have any real-world working experience, at my university <laughs> that biomedical engineering is a growing and well-paid field. I know I should have done my own research back then. It was not difficult to discover that A, New Zealand imports all the medical equipment from abroad. There simply isn't enough money incentive for R&D. Two, no company is going to hire a biomedical engineer graduate before an electrical engineering, mechanical engineering graduate who has a much better technical skills. Anyway, I got my degree in 2012, was unemployed for six months, and eventually resorted to working <clears throat> as a charity fundraiser, construction laborer, letterman, and laboratory technician. Uh, and I hated every one of these jobs. Not only was I earning pathetic wages, I was wasting my life performing repetitive and brainless tasks. That's why you never listen to your mother about degrees. So I decided enough is enough, quit my last job, and spent all my savings on getting another degree in 2016. I'm now majoring in theoretical mathematics. I busted my ass off and completed almost all upper-level graduate classes. Would you have master's? Hang on. I spent all my money earning another degree. I am majoring in theoretical mathematics. I busted my ass off and completed almost all the upper-level undergraduate classes. As a four-year bachelor's degree is in just one year with an average GPA of 3.7. Outstanding. I also have an IQ range of 120, 130, so I know I'm STEM material. You are indeed. <clears throat> Do not go into elementary ed for the children and become a teacher. My goal is very clear. I want to become a data scientist, and I've come up with my own plan. I'm going to spend four more Years getting a master's degree and PhD in mathematics statistics, complete with a 12 week programming boot camp and 12 week data science boot camp over two summers. By the time I apply to my first data science job, I will be 31. Does my plan sound stupid? Should I forego the PhD? I know the PhD carries more weight than a master's degree, but is the <clears throat> difference worth three years of my life? Uh, I, I, no, it's not. Why the fuck? This is why I wanted to do it at the hotel. Um, Anyway, yeah, the PhD sounds like overkill. All right, look, you got the math. Okay, you have that down. Uh, and I like your boot camp ideas. All right, you, the, the boot camp is going to give you the programming skills you need. And then if they have a data scientist or statistics boot camp, I take that too. I didn't know that they have those. But that sounds good. Because <clears throat> with those three things combined, all your degrees, one of which key being in math, even though it's theoretical, but then also your programming skills you can pick up at boot camp, and your emphasis on statistics, You'll have the skills necessary to start going into big data. And what I'd further do to tailor your research and your studies is find out what uh, programs. I mean, I know it's, what is it, SAS, SQL. It, it's been so long since I was in the finance world that we you know, we did those proto-data-based things. Um, I'd find out what big data scientists are using. I mean, just search what are big data scientists. Call up data scientists. What are the programs that you're using? And learn those programs. Learn those languages. Learn that software, and that I, I it almost makes it moot going back to get your PhD. Now, 
by the time you're all done dicking around with all these degrees, I don't know, a PhD might as well be worth it because by that time, once you get to that level, you have the background, it's only going to be another couple of years. You might as well because there are some fields where the PhD, especially mathematics, uh, programming, um, you could make some serious dough. And then what comes along with a PhD is your plan B is always that you can teach. What I would say is back off the school a little bit. I mean, go ahead and complete your degree that you're currently in now with um, theoretical math, uh, but go into the boot camps, learn the skills. That should start landing you gigs. You don't need a PhD to go big data, uh, especially with your background. I mean, if you were like, eh, I majored in English, well, yeah, then you better fucking, you know, I'm just glad you did. And even then, the boot camps might help, or they won't hurt. But I'd, I'd take the boot camps first, you seem to be the type that maybe could do, well, you can do two boot camps at the same time. Take them one after another. Take the programming one first, then the statistics one, because the programming skills are going to help you out. You're already going to have the math background. I, don't, I mean, you, you know enough about statistics that you can fake it. Take the statistics and then see where you are then, okay? You have, and then, then go ahead and throw a couple lines in the water. See if you if you don't get a job. I'd be surprised if you didn't. There's always the chance you won't, but I'd be surprised if you didn't, especially with those three things, the two boot camps and all your degrees. Then, if for whatever reason that doesn't work, I'd be more worried about like, okay, what's wrong with you? What is not jiving with you and this industry? Because you will have more than enough education and skills uh, to start becoming a quant or a data scientist. If you want to become the official data scientist, not just merely work in big data, but actually be a scientist with the fucking lab coat and the glasses and the pencil protector, uh, yeah, then maybe get your PhD. But I, I would save that for later. You should be able to make pretty darn good coin without the PhD. And then, if you want to make even more coin and have the backup plan to become a professor, sure, if you have an intellectual interest in it too. I mean, I'm, I'm so bored, I may just go get a doctorate in economics. The only problem is it's not worth the money. Or the time, the money I'd have to give up. Anyway, so I apologize for being late with this. Uh, terribly sorry. Uh, but yeah, you, I, I like your plan. It's just postpone the PhD. Let's let's stop going into theoretical math and bioengineering. and Let's get some practical skills that are listed in the job description. See if that doesn't land you a job in, what, 24 weeks? So that's, that's uh, two quarters, just shy of half a year. Try that. So, anyway, best of luck to all of you. Toodles.